So we had a question recently asking us to compare the new Triv Next against the Boogaboo B6 and the Cybex Mios. And even though we have compared the last two of these before, we thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a look at all three of them together and provide a definitive explanation of their differences with regards to child comfort, performance and mechanics, as well as how their differing designs affect which sorts of lifestyle needs each will best fulfill. And starting off with the B6 then, the model clocks in at 9.4 kilos and folds down at 90 by 47 by 36 centimeters, making it the largest of the three in terms of folded size, though not by that much. When it comes to child comfort, the B6's seat is 29 centimeters wide and has a total length for its sitting surface of 95 centimeters and a maximum length of 113 when also taking into account space beneath the canopy and the distance from the baseboard to the front frame mounted footrest. The B6 is the only model of these three that doesn't have an inbuilt leg rest, the base and backboards instead extending telescopically, and while this is fine for children under a year or so, despite the increased length of the baseboard, older children will still need to use the front frame footrest instead, which is a bit less comfortable when reclining and also means that there's no foot support in the reversed configuration. Looking at parent comfort, the B6 has the largest range of handle height of these three models, being adjustable between 91 and 108 centimeters. The shopping basket has a decent weight capacity, but is the most difficult to access of these three, other than from the front in my opinion. Like all the models in this video, the B6 can be folded down into a single standing piece with the seat attached, though I would note that the mechanisms on the model, in particular on the seat frame, as well as a large number of separate hinged components on the chassis, make the B6 a bit more complex and fiddly than these other strollers for both folding as well as removing and reversing the seat. As far as durability is concerned, the B6's seat frame is the model's weak point, being constructed almost entirely of plastic, while the chassis by contrast is actually pretty strong. Looking lastly at how the model drives, the B6 is the best of these three for holding up to all day, everyday use over varied urban terrain, including stuff like gravel, broken sidewalks, and lighter walking paths. It will feel a bit bumpy if the going gets too rough, and it does have a tendency to loosen up quite a bit over time but the wheel size and suspension aren't too bad for a smaller sized model. Moving on, the current version of the Mios is slightly heavier, weighing in at 9.8 kilos, but folds down to 30 by 50 by 65 centimeters, making it the smallest of the three. As far as the seat is concerned, the model has a similar width of 28 centimeters and measures 96 centimeters in length for the sitting surface. Unlike the B, the Mios does have an integrated adjustable leg rest, though lacks a proper foot rest on the front frame. These two factors, meaning that the model will be more comfortable in its reclined position, as well as in its parent-facing configuration, for longer than the B, up until around two and a half or three years old. But it may be a bit more cramped for older children, in comparison to the B in its forward-facing configuration, using the front frame mounted foot rest. Looking at parent comfort, the Mios's handle is adjustable between 98 and 108 centimeters, and the shopping basket is similarly sized, but easier to access. Folding the Mios is also easier than with the B, with the model's mechanisms being simpler and less fiddly, and the chassis being more rigid. Like the B, the Mios also folds down to a single standing piece, though it's worth noting that this is the only stroller of the three that can't do this with the seat in the reversed position, only forward facing. When it comes to durability, the Mios is less susceptible to loosening or symmetry issues than the B, but is built a bit slimmer, and, despite having similarly sized wheels, is not quite as good at tolerating rougher ground. It's still a model that can be used all day, every day, but I would generally suggest it more for smoother cities, due to having a bit more minimal suspension, and also simply as a result of not being nearly as loose as the B, where looseness, strangely, actually has the one advantage of soaking up vibrations so that they're not all transmitted higher up to the seat and handle. Alright, looking lastly at the Triv next, this is the lightest of these models, weighing in at just under 9 kilos, and folds down to 32 by 57 by 69 centimeters. As far as child comfort is concerned, the Triv next seat is the widest of the three, at 31 centimeters, and it's the only model here to have both an adjustable leg rest integrated into the seat frame and a front frame mounted foot rest, giving it then a total length of 96 centimeters for the sitting surface and a longer 104 centimeters when using the front frame mounted foot rest. 
The Triv Next doesn't have a full flat recline like the B or Mios, but that being said, it's still very deep. And even with the other two models, the manufacturers still recommend using either a bassinet or a baby nest for newborns anyway, as Nuna does with the Triv Next. When it comes to parent comfort, the Triv Next handle is adjustable between 96 and 106 centimeters, while the shopping basket, despite having essentially the same weight capacity as these other two models, is the largest and most accessible. And the model's folding system is also the easiest to use in my opinion, giving the Triv Next a real edge over these other strollers for heavily car-based lifestyles, where an easy setup and fold down can be really handy for reducing the time in and out of the trunk. As far as durability and driving go, the Triv Next has a strange dichotomy of characteristics compared to these other models, being on one hand the most terrain capable of the three, with its larger wheels and decent suspension, while on the other also being the weakest in terms of holding up to all-day, everyday use, where, despite actually having the simplest mechanisms of these strollers, it also has the thinnest bars relative to its size, that strain a bit side to side, especially with a larger child, and give the model a high propensity for loosening over time. That being said, for somewhere like American suburbia, where people are often looking for a model to take in and out of the car a lot, and generally stroll for shorter periods, the Triv Next can function quite well, and even has that added terrain versatility, allowing it to tackle ground that the other two models here would struggle on. So, which of these three would I recommend getting then? To be honest, as far as I'm concerned, it's really only a choice between two of these models, as I've long found the B6 to be a bit too frustrating to use due to the complexity of its design. And if you're looking at the B, I'd actually suggest waiting a bit, as Boogaboo will be releasing a similarly sized model within the next few weeks called the Dragonfly that might prove to be better. Between the other two, the Mios would be the better choice if you don't necessarily get around with a car a lot of the time, and need something smaller for negotiating a crowded city, for example. But note that it will only work for you if you live somewhere smoother, and preferably not somewhere that it snows. The Triv Next, on the other hand, is ideal as an in and out of the car model, especially if you do need to traverse rougher ground from time to time. And it can also function well as a travel stroller for rougher destinations, since it's the only one of these three whose weight falls below the common requirements for gate checking. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask you subscribe, as it helps us continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you're currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.